Joe and Lisa Marie Nash started LM Endeavors with a simple focus of helping others succeed by growing their own food and producing their own energy. I'm at their headquarters to learn about everything LM Endeavors has to offer their community. How did you learn about hydroponics? It was a lot of research. The, the problem is making hydroponics work in suburbia because if I had a storage unit or a lab or something like that, it'd be pretty easy like, like they do at Disney. So I had to figure out how can I incorporate you know, food production here in suburbia. And that's uh, you know, really, I like to eat. I like to eat fresh. That's, that's a really short answer how I got involved with it. What is hydroponics in a nutshell? So hydroponics in a nutshell is growing your own food. It's making sure that you're eating safe food, that you know what's going into your food. Um, you don't have to worry about any kind of what could be in your food that you're not aware of, the bending, um, the hauling the large equipment, things like that. In a nutshell, the plants really only need a couple things to live. They need water, they need sunlight, they need nutrients, and they need something to set up their root structure in. And once you provide that, very simply, just like we have right here, they kind of take care of themselves. And how did you come up with the design? As they say, necessity is the mother of all invention. Here I am in suburbia, not a big lot, can't have a garden because there's no room. And if I wanted to do hydroponics, which is a little bit better from a, a space utilization standpoint, um, if you go online and you look up some of the hydroponic designs, they are five gallon buckets, there's all kinds of contraptions, and they're not exactly HOA friendly. So I needed to come up with a design that would fulfill a lot of different aspects. It, first off, it needed to work. It had to be aesthetically pleasing. It had to be adaptable. It had to be easy to clean. Um, it had to be automated because nobody's got time to tend to a garden. We could go away for a week and everything's still automated. Everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It was also important for me to try to utilize materials that anybody could get their hands on. Uh, just about everything that I do comes from big box or a hydroponic supply store. It's, it's replicable and I want it to catch on. I, I, I want somebody to steal my ideas and go, if they want to do this themselves, that's, that's part of what this is about because it's not about us doing this. It's about what good can this do for everybody else. Yes, and each, each um, design is custom made. So it's not just, you know, one design doesn't fit all. So it depends on where you are, where you want it. Um, what you're going to grow. What you want it to look like. What you want it to look like. Yeah. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. What are the main components? The components are uh, gutter, vinyl gutter, um, a structure to, to support the gutter. When you look at how everything interfaces after you get your plant started and the rock wool, this is a little baby Swiss shard here. Um, then they graduate and these are clay pellets. So you just put your clay pellets in these reusable pots, put your little guy in there, fill it up, up with the clay pellets. And once he's covered, he's just ready to sit in the unit. And uh, I'm gardening at the table. I didn't even get dirty. No dirty fingernails. <laughs> this is awesome. How about we cover some of those other components, like the nutrients? Okay. The other parts of the, of the system is you have a nutrient tank which I like to install with a float switch. So it's hard plumbed in. Uh, that way, if you're gone for a week, the tank's not going to, you know, all your, all your water's evaporated out from the plants. The, right. It's going to constantly fill it. And from there, uh, everything's on a timer. So the pump's going to run for 12 hours a day, roughly. It doesn't need to run at night because no evapotranspiration is going on at night. You have to add nutrients. You have to keep the pH right. It's really a lot less complicated than what it sounds. Mm -hmm. I tell my customers add a tablespoon of this once a week. Just make sure you know adjust your pH with a little bit of diluted acid, because in order for the plants to take in a lot of the nutrients, the pH needs to be below seven. Those nutrients need to be not in a solid uh, state. They need to be easily available for the plant to absorb, and that usually happens at a pH around six. And it doesn't really take that much time. I mean, every day you don't have to attend to it. I mean, you five minutes, 10 minutes a day, maybe every other day. I mean, it, it's really no uh, an hour, time and effort, uh, an, hour an hour a week. week yeah. yeah. And I don't have a green thumb. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's great because it does, it's all, it does it pretty much all by itself. So, yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds like you mentioned a couple of pros. What are some others? I just like the freshness 
of it. I like knowing what's in my food. I like knowing what's not in my food. And I like the idea that there's not a lot of waste. You know, if I'm going to the store and uh, you know, I'm buying lettuce, I'm, I'm buying more lettuce than I can eat in one yeah. sitting. But yeah. when I can walk out on my lanai and, and take whatever lettuce I need for, you know, tacos, um, it, it's going to stay much fresher on the plant mm -hmm. than it's going to in my refrigerator. Plus, yeah. it's not already four days old when, you know, I'm, I'm getting it as fresh as I can at the store. Mm -hmm. What tips and tricks do you have for those interested in starting a hydroponic garden? Get some help. <laughs> that's what we're here for. And that's what makes this work. Um, I, I tell my customers, you know, I'm going to build you an airplane, but don't worry about flying it because I'm going to help you every step of the way. And that's really where the enjoyment comes for me and not overwhelming somebody. It's like, I'm not going to throw a book at you. I'm not going to have you do a bunch of videos. It's like today we're going to plant. I'm going to teach you how to plant. I'm going to teach you how to make your basic, you know, starting solution, which is a lot more mild than what they're going to get. And then once we reach certain stages, then the class continues. And it's a lot of it's done virtually with text messages mm -hmm. and, you know, just a quick phone call. If you send me a picture of what you got going on, I, I'm, I can be ready for you for the next step. Then there's a lot of engagement in the first three months. And it seems like every time... After three months, the customers start <laughs> ghosting me because they got this down and they just mm -hmm. don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I feel like I raised a child and it's like, okay, here you got this. You can you can do this now on your own. And, that, and that's really the fun of this. Yeah, there are more pros than cons. I mean, like you, like you were saying, it's just you go out, you just get whatever you need. You don't have to worry about overbuying and, you know, something just sitting in your refrigerator going bad. And, you know, if... if if you have too much, you can always share with your neighbors, make friends. Yeah, right. Here, here's a pro. I've probably got about 18 cents into this right here, you know, and I can go buy a bundle of Swiss chard that's five days old that's like four or five bucks. It just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the project you're working on with Cypress Springs Elementary School. We're really super excited about this. A lot of kids these days, they have no idea where their food comes from. Um, they think it might come from a box or, you know, add a seasoning packet or, you know, it's dry food. They don't know what certain items of produce really are. They look at it and they have absolutely no clue. So it's nice to be able to teach them and help them learn where their food comes from, what goes into making their own food, growing their own food. I am just beyond excited that this contraption that I built on the side of a house so that we could have fresh food has evolved to where friends, neighbors, and now an elementary uh, school, all the new minds that are open. This is, this is why I do what I do. It's absolutely incredible to open minds and show them, hey, gardening isn't necessarily, you don't even have to get dirty to do this. You, you, can, grow, <laughs> you can grow your food in a, in a, in a different way. And, uh, you know, partnering with the, with the, the staff of the school, they've been absolutely mm -hmm. phenomenal. And I can't wait to see where this goes. What are your hopes for the future when it comes to hydroponics? I'm a, I'm a firm believer that the only thing that you take with you is what you give back today. And if I can introduce a new method that suburbia can embrace, that, again, for all the reasons it was designed the way that it was designed, that people can not just be the consumers that we are these days, but actually contribute and start producing their own. I don't think I could ask for any more. We have to take care of our planet, reduce, reuse, recycle. I mean, there's some things in here that we just reuse and, you know, you don't have to go and, um, you know, keep buying things and, and getting new chemicals that are just going to, you know, go by the wayside. Um, so it's nice to be able to be sustainable in that sense. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our viewers? Yes, actually, um, just be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I love to teach, I love to help, I love to solve problems. This does solve part of the problem, it's not the whole problem, but uh, we love being the part of the solution that we are. How do people stay in touch if they're interested? Well, we've got two different websites. Uh, like it says, we do hydroponics and solar. So our, our hydroponic website is orlandohydroponics.com. And our solar website is joedoessolar.com. And that's not a sales website. That's a website to help you navigate a, a pretty, what could be a risky financial uh, situation and help educate you uh, before you, you do something that maybe you regretted. 
Oh, thank you so much for having us here at your home. I really appreciate it. Thank we're, you. We're humbled. Thank you very much for your interest. We appreciate it. Our channel is growing with every new subscriber. Make sure that you have your notifications turned on so that you're notified of every new episode that comes out weekly. If you haven't already, follow and like our social media profiles on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.